you are a React developer that wants to learn Svelte or you just want to compare the two libraries, then stick around because in this video, we're going to rebuild a React application using Svelte so that we can compare core concepts such as state, event handling, global state and transitions. Let's do it. All right, here is the application that we are going to be rebuilding using Svelte. It's currently built uh, in React and you may recognize it as the Twitter tweet form. So I have my avatar here on the left. I have this uh, input and if I begin typing a tweet, you can see that the progress wheel goes up as my character count goes up. If I submit this tweet, it gets added to the timeline. And if I were to add a long tweet, this is a really, really long tweet. I'm going to eventually hit my character count the progress wheel goes red and I can no longer submit this tweet. This is our starting point for our Svelte project. We have a shared style sheet, which also exists in the React app. We have this calculate progress function, which we don't really need to worry about. It takes in a tweet and calculates that offset value for that circular SVG. And finally, we have this app.svelte, which is going to house all of our components. Now that we know where to start, we can go ahead and create our first Svelte component, which is going to be this tweet form. But before we do that, let's take a look at how we would approach this using React. With a React functional component, we uh, export our JSX, our markup, our tweet form like this. So we declare a new function and we simply return a whole bunch of JSX. What does this look like in Svelte? Let's go ahead and create our Svelte tweet form component. Now with Svelte, all of your logic lives inside script tags, which means that anything outside of these script tags is going to be rendered to the DOM. So I can grab all of this, I can pop it in here, and with Svelte, we have the luxury of using class, which is nice. And now I need to import this component from app.svelte. So this is where I'm going to add some logic inside of the script tag. I'm going to import tweet form from tweetform.svelte, and I'm going to render it here, tweet form like so. So let's check this out in the browser. Here is our tweet form in the browser. We're not yet rendering the avatar on the left and the form doesn't have any logic yet, so it doesn't do anything, but it's a good start. Now I want to render the avatar by passing some props down to my tweet form. How do we do that in Svelte? In our React component, we access our props as uh, function parameters and we can use them in our JSX. But in our Svelte component, we declare a new prop like this, export let username, export let image, source. Now this looks a little funky, but what we're essentially saying by using this export keyword is that this is a prop that's going to be passed in. So now we can go ahead and we can pass those in. Username is front end tier. Image source is just a local file in the public folder. Now we can use these props within our tweet form. So with our React component, we are conditionally rendering the image like this, but Svelte has his own syntax for templating, which looks a little like this. If image source, and we close our tag using forward slash if. So if we have an image source, we want to render an image with the image source and an alt that uses the uh, username, whoops username, username's avatar, like so. Now let's check this out in the browser. Nice, so this is the image avatar as expected. And next up, we want to add some state to this component so that we can track the value of this tweet. To add state to our React component, we're using the use state hook, which gives us a value and a setter. To add state to our Svelte component, we simply need to declare a new variable. How neat is that? So we have tweet that has a default value of an empty string and we have progress offset, which does not have a default value. Next up, we need to add our event handlers to our text area so that we can assign it to the value of tweet. And in React, that looks like this. We have a value attribute and an on change handler. So we can do something similar in Svelte. Value is tweet and on change. So you'll notice that we're not using camel case here. Uh, the syntax for Svelte is on colon, whatever the event is. And we can do the same thing. We just need to assign tweet to e.target.value. So to update state in Svelte, we simply reassign the variable. One small catch is the behavior of on change in Svelte because it behaves slightly different to React in that it only fires when you blur the field. What we actually want is on input, 
which are going to fire on every key press, which is much more similar to the uh, behavior of on change in React. Now, what if I told you that all of this is completely unnecessary because Svelte gives us this really handy bind attribute. So we can use that and assign it to tweet, which does basically what we just did. It assigns the value attribute and handles the input event handler, which is a nice shorthand. Next, you'll notice in our React uh, component, we have this use effect. So every time that the value of tweet changes, we are setting the uh, progress offset by calling this calculate progress function. So we wanna do something similar in our Svelte uh, component. So let's go ahead, we'll import this function. And what you might think here is that you could do something like this, right? Calculate progress, pass it our tweet. Uh, we also wanna grab this constant. I'll just pop it here. Uh, max length is max tweet length. Now let's take a look at what happens if we try to use this uh, value. So I'm gonna come down here and I'm going to assign the stroke dash offset to this piece of state. Now let's take a look at what happens in the browser. If I type some text into this text area, you'll notice that the circle does not come around as our character count goes up. So what's happening here? We are setting the value of progress offset to be the result of this calculate progress function, but it's not updating as expected. And that's because this line is not going to recompute whenever the state changes in your component, which it would if this were a React component. We actually have to explicitly mark it as reactive using this dollar colon syntax, which is a little funky, but it basically says that any reference in this line, if it changes, rerun this line. So whenever the value of tweet changes, we're going to rerun this line and recompute the value of progress offset. Now, if I go over here, you'll see that this works as expected and our wheel comes around as our character count goes up. Now we can go ahead and add some validation bits such as disabling the tweet form if it's not valid and setting this wheel to be read if we reach our character count. In our React component, I've added these variables that we use for validation such as has tweet value that asserts that the tweet has a length greater than zero, tweet too long which checks if the length of the tweet is longer than the maximum length and is valid that checks both the uh, value and that the tweet is not too long. So we can go ahead and we can just grab these pop them in our Svelte component. And because these are reactive, we need to declare them as such using the dollar colon syntax. Now we can make use of these variables. So I'm going to set this button to be disabled if the form is not valid. And we are going to um, set the stroke color here. If the tweet is too long, it's going to be red. Otherwise it's going to be white. Nice, so now we can see that our tweet form is disabled if we don't have a value. If we reach our character count, this is a really long tweet. We should see, if we get there, we should see that the form gets disabled and this wheel turns red. Nice, looking good. You may remember that in our finished application, when we submit a tweet, it gets added to the timeline. In our React application, this is all handled using context, which is shared global React state, which looks a bit like this. In our top level app component, we're having to wrap all of our trial components in a context provider, which looks like this. We're setting tweets uh, in state and we're exposing this set tweets function that we can use in our components to update the context, which we're doing here in the tweet form. We're pulling in the context by importing tweet context and we're using this add tweet function when we submit the form down here. What if I told you that shared state in Svelte is much easier than this and it comes in the form of stores. So I'm going to come over here and I'm going to create a new file in my Svelte project, which I'm going to call stores.js. And from here, I'm going to import a writable store from Svelte store. And we're going to create a new writable store called tweets by calling writable and passing it a default value, which is an empty array. Ah, we also need to export this. And now we can use this store in our tweet form. So I'm going to import tweets from stores. And we need to add our submit handler to our form on submit, handle submit. We need to actually create this function now. Const handle submit. We're gonna do the classic e.prevent default, which is going to prevent the form submitting uh, with the browser native behavior. We can set tweets by calling update 
So I can either pass a value here and it will overwrite the store, or I can pass it a function, which will return the existing value, which is exactly what we need, because we want to spread in the existing tweets and add our new tweet to the end. Now I just want to uh, reset the value of tweet, which is going to reset our form. And one extra really neat thing that Svelte gives us is uh, modifiers. So if I pop prevent default on this, I can scrap this and Svelte does that for us, which is really neat. Now that we're successfully updating our tweet store on submit of the tweet form, uh, we can go ahead and create the timeline component that's going to list all of those tweets from the store. So we're going to create a new component called timeline. Timeline.svelte. I need to import the store. Uh, import tweets from stores. And this is where stores get a little funky because we can't directly access the value of tweets right off like this. Uh, we can either subscribe to changes and reassign it to a value, which I don't really love, or we can simply access it using the dollar syntax like this. So in our component body, we're going to wrap all of our tweets in a div with a class of timeline. And then we're going to use an each block for each tweet. So notice we access the value of tweets using this dollar syntax as tweet. We can close this using forward slash each. We want to render a div with a class of timeline item. And then we can simply pop the tweet value here. And finally, we need to actually import this component from our app component. So I'm going to import it here. I'm going to pop it right below our tweet form. Very nice. So now if we submit a new tweet, we should see it listed in our timeline. One last thing, I also want to pass the username here too. Username front end tier. And we need to declare a new prop using export let username. And we're simply going to render it right here. Very nice, looking good. The very last thing we want to do here is animate in our tweets, because if we go to the finished React application, you can see that as I submit this form, this tweet animates in nicely. The reason we're going to cover this is because Svelte treats animations and transitions as first class citizens. So they come bundled in the library, which is awesome. But with our React application, we have to use some kind of third party library. Here is our timeline component in our React application. We're using Frame Emotion, which is a very good animation library, but React doesn't give us anything out of the box to handle transitions. So we're using Frame Emotion here to animate each tweet in. Svelte gives gives us transitions out of the box. So over here in my Svelte component, the timeline component, I can import the slide transition from Svelte transition. So Svelte gives us a few different transitions such as fade, fly in, and they are super customizable, but we just want to use the basic slide like this transition slide. And it is as simple as that. Now we should see each tweet animate in nicely. Svelte is the best. Nice, and it slides in. Hello. Nice, I think we did it. We successfully rebuilt this app using Svelte. Hopefully that was a useful side-by-side -side comparison between React and Svelte. If you haven't used Svelte yet, I'd really recommend you give it a go and let me know how you get on in the comments of this video. And if you enjoyed this video, make sure you subscribe to the channel so you can see more content just like this. Thank you for watching and I'll catch you in the next one. In our Svelte component, we didn't, we didn't, we didn't.